So after a lot of football manager being played between the last episode and today, um, I have some news to report. So why are we on Saldana's page? Better yet, why is his value 61 million? Well, to answer that question, I would like to give you a choice. Would you rather hear the good news first, the bad news first, or the funny news first? I don't know actually why I'm waiting because I don't think you'll be able to influence this. So you know what? Let's start with the good news. Let's start this episode on a positive. So Mr. Saldana is now a Serbian national. What are you saying, huh? Mm. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That is absolutely amazing. Mateus Bonifacio Saldana Marino is now a Serbian man, which is absolutely incredible because this means that he's now no longer a foreign player, which means I can get another foreign player in the squad, which is absolutely epic. Unfortunately, he's not yet eligible to play for the Serbian national team, but maybe, at least I hope maybe in a year he can. But yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take for him to be actually eligible for Serbia, but when he is, it's going to be absolutely epic because... This season, he has started off pretty well. Look at that, 8.1 rating. So I think if the Serbian national team wants him, he'll be such a good player. But in terms of the bad news, he is injured for this game. He has a twisted ankle. He'll be out between eight days and three weeks, which is not good, which means he's not going to be available for this game today. And the funny news, and unfortunately, I did a dumb dumb and forgot to come back at the right time because I was rushing through this. We've got an offer for 61 million from Wolves, which I accepted. And thankfully, or unthankfully, I don't know, tell me in the comments what you think. He rejected them. Now, I said it will take some stupid, stupid offers for me to get rid of Saldania. This is a stupid, stupid offer. I don't know, what do you guys think? Hi guys, Mr. Space reporting for duty and welcome back to a new season of FM24 with Partizan. 61 million. 61 million. That's a lot of money. You can do a lot with that money. I love Saldana. I think Saldana is ideally a person who will stay at this club forever. I think, you know, obviously there are better players, but not many players can create such a huge fandom. I don't know, tell me in the comments how good he is in actual real life, because in this game, he is something special. And whenever I look at Instagram or things like this, when I keep track of what's happening in Partizan, he seems to be on the score sheet quite a lot. But is he 51 goals and 72 appearances good? I really hope so. But yeah, the transfer window is in full swing. We've done a lot of transfers and I've decided to come back for the game against Cervantes Vesda because we want payback against them because we're really, we're pissed off. Last season, we lost the cup final against them, and I want to start the season well by showing them that they're... They're not good. We're better. But before we get into that, we have to cover the outs, and we had quite a lot. We are continuing to make money from our own players, from players we've bought from other clubs, and just, you know, I'm a really good financial manager. Please hire me. <laughs> but seriously, we have managed to sell Mihailo Illich for 15.5 million, which can reach up to, I think if you can see on this bit, to 20 million. I mean, obviously he is ranked at 38 to 43 million from Anderlecht. I don't know if he'll ever go for that money, but if he does, we will be due 35% of the next transfer fee, which if it goes for like 30 million, that's another 10 million for this man. I mean, he's a good player. He did quite well for us over how many years he's been, well, since 2020, well, 2020, 2020, 2019. He's had very, very good seasons. He's played lots of games for us, but when offers like this come in, this is just stupid. At 23 years old, he should be fulfilling his potential. A very, very good player. But again, we want to be selling players and then buying even better players. And as you know, for the Serbian Super League, 20 million, that's insane money. Well, the next two sales were a bit less in terms of the financial aspect of it. We sold Crasso for 4.7 to 5.5 million. As you remember, we bought him for 1.7 million. He's had a very good season. We sent him out on loan, made another million off him. And then I decided it's time for us to sell him to Vigo. He's a good player. I bought him in just to kind of be a, that more of... What's it called? The experienced player in the squad. And he brought that. And now I think it's time for us to move him on. And I think you can all respect that. He's good. But at the same time, we have so many young players. And if he gets game time, they don't get game time. And I guess with that in mind, that's why we sold Nandes as well. Thank you for coming in. He filled in that right back position for that season. You know, we lost Stankovic, for God's sakes. We needed a right back. He was quite good. Not 
you know, the best, the best. He was okay for some reason. He only played nine games for us. Hmm. I feel like he played more. Yeah, he played a lot more in the continental bits. He didn't play much, did he? But yeah, he was a very good player. We sold him for 4 million. I mean, we lost 600k, which is fair enough. I mean, he's a 30-year-old man. I hope he does well in Vigo. And him and Kress are going to have fun together. And apart from that, we've sold some players of not really note. I mean, Zam Samchovic left for 1.4 million. We made some money on him. Hiralainen, the guy that I was not really happy with, he got sold to Huddersfield for, what was it, 1.4 million. And instantly, he got loaned out to this team that I'm not going to pronounce. Yeah, I got scammed. Let's move on. I'm embarrassed. Mateus Ferreira, pretty much the same logic. He came in on a free. I've sold him for almost 2.2 million. Very good stuff. Again, Charlie Crew. Just, he wasn't, he wasn't good enough. I mean, look at him. He's had a season with us. Managed to make three caps for the Welsh national team whilst he was with us, which is fascinating. But yeah, I sold him for 600k. I think he's okay. He's not going to develop that much. So make more money along the way there. Gabriel is the same. Jankovic is the same. Dragovic is the same. And now we move on to the fun bit of where I make most of my money because a lot of players that we like and we rate are going on loan. So we have players like Vivieros, Radkov, uh, Fatikanti, Ohyongyu, and Alilovic going on loan, hopefully getting lots and lots and lots of game time. And also Tin Van Ingelom is going on loan as well. Just all these guys are incredible and I want them to get as much game time as possible just so they can be the best they can. And Juan David Vivieros... He's going to Utrecht, where he hopefully gets stupid amounts of game time. But most importantly, he's on a 1.6 million... That's not even it. That's not even... Hang on. It says 3.2 million. Yeah, he's on 3.2 million for the year, which is insane. I think that pretty much... Yeah, it already covers what we paid for him. So good luck there. And then next season, this guy, if he develops even further... Oh, he's going to be so good. And we made money on him. Look at that. Financial business guy. That's me. In terms of ins... Um, let's put it this way. I have stupid amounts of money and I don't know where to put it. And with that in mind, I spent 8 million on Francois Mendy, who looks like he could be quite a decent center back. I think he has a bit of potential. He'll be quite okay. You know, very, very good physicals. I mean, for this level, absolutely incredible. He's tall, he's strong, good jumping reach, good natural fitness. Maybe can play a little bit in a back three if we decide to reshift to that. But most importantly, he's good. Our coaches think he's quite a good, you know, exciting young prospect. So we have some good chance to develop him. 8 million is a lot. But at the same time, that's a lot of money. Next up, we have signed a man who could be one of the better deep playing playmakers that I've seen in a long time. Matias Villagara for 5.25 million has come in from Defensia and Justicia. And he has 17 first touch. 16 technique and 16 vision unfortunately he can't run which that's why he's a deep line playmaker which hopefully we can develop him to be able to run but that's very very good and again he's 18 years old we signed him for quite cheap we are paying him stupid wages because people want us to pay stupid money one of the comments in the last episodes was you know you need to sign more players more experience and i mean this is probably a bad time to bring this up 18 years old and all that but People see how much money we have. And, you know, we have a Matias Villagara, who is a squad player, asking for 14k a week, which I think is insane, especially considering how a lot of our players are not on that level. But yeah, there we go. He is very good. I think he can be an immense, immense player. I don't know. You won't be able to see it because my face is in the way. There's not many bad cons apart from the fact that he's a bit fickle, which is unfortunate. But apart from that, he's committed. He could improve a lot. His first touch is good and he is a natural in a couple of positions. So hopefully... We'll give him some game time and he will develop. Our scouts are going all over South America and we have brought in another player. Sergio Barrios for 1.3 million. Can you see why I signed him? Can you, can, you, can, you see, can you see why I signed him? Need I say more? This guy has incredible physicals. He is rapid. He can cross. He can dribble. He can pass to be fair. And if we can improve his mentals... This guy is going to be the fastest man alive. He's almost the Flash at 18 years old. And I can't wait for him to be tearing up the league. I mean, we said it that he's an important player because otherwise we wouldn't have signed him. He will get lots of game time coming off the bench. Three more signings. Oh, well, technically four. There's one more that's on the other page. Thank you, Football Manager. But Lulzim Marku is another player on stupid wages for the player that he is. He's very good. 
My scouts, I have sent them all over the world, and they found a Finnish man who is quite good. There's not many incredible, amazing Finnish players, and the last Finnish player I signed was a scam. I don't think this guy is a scam. I think he is actually quite good. I mean, apart from the fact that he still can't really run, which apparently is a problem in my universe, <laughs> people can't run, but he's decent in mentals, he's got good, good passing, he's a good player. If he can improve on his vision a little bit as well, it'll be very, very nice, but I'm excited to welcome him to the club. Lazi Marco, you know what? Please, for all my Finnish viewers, which I don't think there's a single Finnish man out there watching this channel, and if you are, leave in the comments that, hello, I'm from Finland. You have a lot of answering to do for your teammates or for your countrymen who scammed me. Okay, so two big guys. First of all, Jerry Sanjust, who is a very, very good player and we are paying him huge wages. Do I need to say more? I think he's probably the first player we signed on a free who's actually, I don't want to say world class, but he's approaching a level of a team that should be competing higher up in the Champions League. We can't afford these guys much and he was probably the best player we could sign for a decent wage. But again, a player of his caliber, very quick, very good at defending, good mentals, 25k. This is the smallest value I could offer. There were offers for 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 Ks that players generally thought I would pay. And I will not. But Jerry Sanjust will be an incredible player. He's already played a few games for us. I think he's going to be our main center back, which is helped by the fact that Illich is gone. So, you know, we got a good player, which I think is an improvement on Illich. I mean, might as well compare him. Yeah, I mean, need I say more? Maybe a little bit worse defensively, but everywhere else, he's just much better. So there we go, an improvement, plus we made a shit ton of money. <laughs> oh boy, every single football manager save. Every single year for the past three years, I get scammed into signing Reiner. Every single year. And the reason why I signed him this year is because he was promised that he was going to get the Spanish nationality and he won't be a foreign player. Unfortunately, he left to join us and he didn't get his paperwork back in time. So he's still a foreign player. He needs to go back to Spain. Ideally, I can loan him out, which I'm trying to, to a Spanish team. But it's not working. In terms of everything else, I don't know why he never manages to develop in any of my football manager saves. He seems to be a decent player. Just looking at his stats, he's quite good. I mean, in his reports, he has nothing that's really, really bad. So there's nothing that's like, oh yeah, he just doesn't want to play. I mean, he is on high wages, which is a little bit frustrating, but he will hopefully, if he stays, give us a bit of decent rotation. He is obviously better than Lelovic. I think there's no point me telling this, but yeah, I'm annoyed to myself. And finally, there we go. We have signed a wonder kid that is actually a wonder kid. Valentin Barco has come in from OM for 3.6 million. And unfortunately, in this universe, he doesn't seem to develop. His determination is crap, and he's... Well, he's okay. He's going to be a good backup for Borza, who hasn't left, which is absolutely awesome, despite how much he wanted to leave. But at the same time, yeah, he has some room to improve. Hopefully, I'll give him a bit of game time. And I think the way I'm playing this year is I'm going to be trying to play him as a makeshift right back. Maybe he has... Because he has a little bit of... You know, he's got good passing, good marking. He can be that player that we want. He can be that Basic player that we want and play a little bit from the midfield, which would be kind of cool to see. We're going to continue doing this because in this game, for some reason, I can't find a right back. There's lots of left backs, but not a single right back. So Valentin Barco, the wonder kid who is known for his left back ability, who's going to be playing in Brighton in real life, is going to be playing on the right hand side for me. I have no idea what I'm doing. And with that out of the way, I need a sip of water. You need to hit that like and subscribe to my channel if you are intrigued by the signings that we have done this season. And also, if you're excited for us to take on Tirana Zvezda in the Serbian Super League, because so far, the start of the season was very, very good. Let me have some water and I'll be back in a second. Ah, I talk too much. Anyways, first game back, Radnik. We beat them 3-0. Incredible. Valentin Barko scored a penalty. Yeah, that, 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 that's it. Toma Basic scored a goal. Not from a free kick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Dusan Milovanovic, who I will be saying his name quite a lot because he scored a lot of goals at the start of the season, has managed to get the third goal. Moving on, Yavor, 5-1. Dusan Milovanovic, two goals. Very important. Marko Stamenic, one goal. Matija Popovic, 
Wang Go, the man is back on the score sheet, and Mr. Soldani himself, with a beautiful Serbian passport, has scored a goal against Yevor. Then we move on to Zhelezničar, and the only thing of note is Popovic has scored again. He's back. Do you even want me to list every single goal scorer? We beat Spartak 9-1, and the best part is that the one goal that was scored by Spartak was from Dragan Stoicevelic, who is a channel favorite from my previous FM, well, 21 experience. So technically, 10 goals were scored by Partizan Boys. <laughs> very good. But yeah, very, very good stuff. Esteva on the score sheet, Marko on the score sheet, Saldanya, Belic, Milovanovic, and Popovic on the score sheet. And I forgot Stamenic. Why would I do that? Yeah, so we managed to beat Karabakh 5-1, who aren't really on our level in this save, despite the fact that in real life they did really well against Bayer Leverkusen. But goals from Basic, Nikola Milinkovic with a double, out of all players, Sasa Saranic and Saldanya, finally an attacking player scoring, weird. But yeah, 5-1 against them, Juninho scored from, the, from them as well, but it was an easy result as, you know, I'm just going to skip the Mlados thing just real quick. Yeah, it was kind of the same thing. We played a weak side against them, 2-1, didn't really need to sweat. So that means we're in the UEFA Champions League, which is absolutely incredible. Mladost, 2-0 against them. You know, Milinkovic and Sufrat Moyenata on the score sheet. And finally, the game before this, Dusan Milovanovic scored the only goal against Radnički. So, enough of this. We're taking on Cervena Zvezda today and hopefully beating them. But with what lineup? So for today's game against Cervena Zvezda, I want to show you my best squad because it'll be nice to beat them with more than one goal. Ideally, two or three or four to make them pay for what they did last game. But this is our starting lineup. We're going to have Hudikov in goal, who is incredible. He had some offers for him, but nothing too serious there. Sanjus making his live comp debut for you guys. Milinkovic as the other center back. Borza, who is still here. I love you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, lots of offers for him and scary stuff. Vitek as the halfback. I'm trying a new thing. Because I think he can be a decent halfback. I mean, if you look over here, I mean, he is already a center back and he can play a little bit with his feet. So why not move him up? And also with the 18, pos 18 positioning, hello? I think he can do lots of good stuff there. And with a good acceleration and pace, he should be able to recover. So I'm excited to try him out there. On the right, like I said, I'm teaching Barco to play that inverted wing back on the right, which would be a good combination with Dean's. Midfield is Stamaric and Dean's, which is pretty much the best thing we can do at this moment in time. Milovanovic, who's on a good run of form, Popovic, who's on a good run of form, and Muinata, who's on a good run of form as well, leading the line. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. First game of the season. Let's freaking go. But before I do that, the bench. The bench, the bench, the bench, the bench, bench. So, Alilovic has left. Uh, Ohyongyu has left. Uh, Ratkov has left. So, we have new players on the bench. But is there anyone I really need to say? First of all, I did actually want to mention... Um, oh, yes! <gasps> Filipovic is going, isn't he? Yes, I've sold Filipovic. Yeah, I've sold Filipovic. Sorry, sorry about that. And Antic is going out on loan because he's annoyed that I'm, he's not getting game time, which is fair enough. You know, he he deserves that. But in terms of everything else, we have Villagara on his on the bench. I think that's going to be his live comp debut for you guys as well. Look at him. He doesn't even have a number. And apart from that, I think from the new, new players, there's not many available. Barrios is injured. Marco is a bit tired. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, Mendy might make a debut today, so we'll see how this game goes. Anyways, enough of this. I hope you're excited. Let's jump into the game. All right, they have... Who the hell is this guy? No idea who that is. This guy's new. This guy's new. They have made a lot of transfers. So the team looks very, very new. Actually, you know what? Let me just quickly pause this and jump to show you how different they look. I mean, they have spent a lot of money this season. They brought in Kovansky. Ignacio Ramirez! Oh! <gasps> Wait, I don't remember. If you remember this guy, I think episode 13 or 14 before the universe got destroyed and my save got wiped, I brought in Ignacio Ramirez and I couldn't play him because he couldn't play for more than two clubs in a year. And he finds his home in Cervena Zvezda. That is insane. The universe is funny, isn't it? But yeah, apart from that, Ibrahim Sadiq has joined... It looks quite fast and good. They, they like their fast, good players, don't they? Maximilian Rohr? Who's this guy? What? Where are they coming from? Why are they? Who are these players? But yeah, apart from that, in terms of outs, nothing much has changed. Are they still a huge side? I... Oh, that's...
Oh! Oh, that's cool! What? Savannah's Fest is finding such cool players, actually, for, for their team. Uh, we have a Serbian whose second nationality is South Korean. Wow, that's really... I'm gonna scout him. That, that's, a, that's a cool combination. But anyway, sorry. Car got carried away. Yeah, their squad is a bit different, obviously. Quite a dif different side. I mean, Ignacio Ramirez is on the bench. Uh, Osman Bukhari is playing. Was he? Is he playing this game? Mm, I guess we'll find out. But yeah, the squad is a bit different to how we saw them in the last game. But hopefully our squad is even better. I mean, nothing has happened since the 32nd minute, which is insane. As St. Just almost scored. Um, this episode, I mean, to be fair, perfect. If this goes like this, at least the video will not be massive. I think that's one of the fears I have is whenever I have a transfer episode, I always tend to waffle. But I think in this case, it'll be absolutely fine as Deans finds himself in lots of space, finds Muinata, who stole the ball, by the way, I forgot to mention. Very good work from him. 1-2 with Barku. Barku, Barco, Jesus Christ. Deans sends the ball in, hits the crossbar. And as you can tell, I am all over the place. Work has been quite hard and difficult. But don't worry, guys. I got you. I will always do these things for you guys. Don't worry. Anyways, so far, I mean, we've had one interesting highlight, or technically two. We had a good shot from San Just, and we had a good shot from Deans, as we steal the ball once again. Popovic with the captain's armband. Popovic with the captain's armband. Popovic, Matisha, Popovic. Oh, my <laughs> Holy shit. Yes. One nil. <laughs> one freaking nil and again from a turnover we've been practicing our transitions which is actually what i'm doing in real life as a manager which is absolutely incredible i'm pushing the girls in our team to to do the transition sorry to bring that from there and it works in full manager as well very very good stuff we actually scored a goal over the weekend with that exact same kind of thing where we pressed the player stole the ball and our player despite you know maybe not shooting from that far outside he scored, which is incredible. But anyway, sorry. I, yeah, I'm a full manager in real life, by the way. I don't get paid as much money as I do in here. But, you know, it's because I don't get paid actually at all. It's a volunteering thing. Yay, low-level managing. Anyways, um, one nil. One nil. Like I said, I am all over the place. So you have to excuse me. What you don't have to excuse is the way these guys are playing. So far, so good. The only player is not doing good is Borza who's probably a little bit pissed at me for not letting him go to, like, Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah, Real Madrid bid on him again. And I think United bid on him. But yeah, these boys are doing good. I hope they continue doing well. And I hope next half will be fun. Because at the end of the day, that's all we want. We want to have fun. As Milovanovic finds Deans, passes it off to Moinata, who has lots of space, by the way, who has lots of space. And Lachlan Deans gets an assist, which to be fair, this shouldn't count as an assist, and I am refusing to pay him money for that assist, because all the money is going to go to Muinata. That's a good finish. Yes, there was a deflection. To be fair, let me just double check before I offer to pay him lots of money. How bad was the deflection? Mm. Donate it to charity, mate. Donate it to charity. It wasn't entirely yours. Maybe half. Half the charity. Two freaking nil, guys. This is so much better, he says, as Barco launches the ball at Hadzuka Dunic. And Ibrahim, who's making his debut for them, at least for my for my side, is putting a cross to Ramirez. And Olianka steps up, and thankfully Ramirez is offside. Ignacio Ramirez has come on the be off the pitch, off the pitch, on the bench, off the bench, on the bench. Uh, like I said, all over the place. Yeah, I don't want him to do well. And anyways, it's time for subs. Well, unfortunately, Milovanovic... Didn't do super well, but it's okay. He's got 7.0 rating. Absolutely respect that. So it's time for some subs. And who's going to come on? I think I think Miladinovic is going to come on. I think he's quite good. I'm going to take off... Hmm, I'm going to take off Borza, and I'm going to put on Antic for probably his last game with you guys because he's either going to retire or he's going to move on to Pastures New after that. So it'll be a good say season say goodbye to Nikola Antic, which is epic. But, apart from that, what else can we do? Sofana Moinata is not doing particularly well in terms of his fitness, but does this mean I should sub him off? Maybe? I mean, first of all, I think it's obvious. Let's set Mora on. Okay, Mora for Barco. Makes sense. Do we wait for some more? You know what? I'll wait for some more time and see what happens. Maybe I can bring some other players on. Let's see if this game gets stabilized. 
and then I'll make more subs. Just th that's how I like to do it, because for all I know, I'm going to get two random injuries, and then they're going to score because I'm playing one man down, which is not going to be good. Although, it doesn't look like it's likely to happen. So maybe it's time for us to do some live comp debut for some of the players. Do we feel that? No, let's play Let's play Estevao. I want Estevao to play more. And who would we start? I'm going to play the more expensive... Yeah, the more expensive Francois Mendy is going to make his live comp debut. Not a bad 19-year-old. Very, very tall. Holy shit, he's very tall. But then again, I think I was... No, I was a bit short at his age. No, I think I was 194 at that age. Yeah, he's my height. <laughs> I love how I have to bring that in every time. Anyways, these are the last two subs. Like I said all over the place i am uh, i'm all over the place and hopefully my team isn't all over the place as antic plays a ball to vitik deans lines up a shot and guys why are we shooting from outside the box is terminus vesda parking the bus a little bit i'm not sure mendy gets his first touch at least from well from your perspective for the team as he drives the ball in popovich jumps up and that would have been a very good start for mendy not bad a very good cross already He's making it seem like he's a very good natural player for us. I mean, the stats are a bit meh, but we've managed to beat Tervena Zvezda 2-0. Good, good, good. Very good. 2-0 against them. Absolutely incredible. Hudikov gets mad of the match for this game? They had one shot. What 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 for? He he did one save. 50 53 passes completed for. Oh my god, he's very good. He's a very good sweeper keeper. Wow. But he doesn't... I I don't know... I don't know why. Huh. Really good. I, no, I can respect that. I'm absolutely happy with this. 2-0 against them. What does this mean for us? Well, first of all, we're still not top of the league, unfortunately, despite the fact that we've won every game apart from one, because Vosovdats is refusing to... Oh no, they lost one. Vosovdats is doing good. Which, you know... Is not good for us because we want to win the league this year. But we're still second with a game in hand, which is okay. I can, we can do that. But yeah, what does this mean for next episode? Well, okay, so for the next episode, I think I'm going to break the Champions League into what I did last time. Maybe I might cut off some of the non-interesting games. We'll see how that goes. But I think we're going to start with Porto and Valencia as our first two games, which is kind of exciting. They're good teams in the sense that it'll be hopefully an interesting game. But hopefully we get points of them as well, which is incredible. And I think I don't want to spoil any other games that we have because it'll be a nice surprise for that episode. I'll get to tell you everyone else who we get. You know, you can already see Shakhtar, although... Let me just check real quick. Okay, no, yeah, yeah, I checked my footage. Uh, you can see the Shakhtar is there, so... Unfortunately, you know, it is spoiled. You know we're playing Shakhtar at some point, which are a good team. But yeah, I think this year we have a good chance... Like we had last year. Just I just hope I if we get Liverpool again, I will be extremely angry. Like really. And on that note, thank you guys for watching this episode. I hope you're excited for this season. I think the team this season is looking very, very good. We are doing a good job of I again. <laughs> it's hard to use the word youthifying, but you know, our squad is even younger. But like the comments have said. It is very important for me to add that quality player. It's important for me to add a quality player that brings experience. But let me just show you, for example, just, sorry, real quick. Let me just show you an example of what I mean when I say it's hard to sign experienced players. Let's go to, you know what? I really want to sign Angelo Preciado. I really want to sign him. He's good. He's a good right back. And to be fair, he's a decent right back, right? He's on 20K, French player at Sporting. Let's see how much he's going to ask. Let's go to his discuss availability with the agent. They're asking for 27 and a half K per week and 33 K, which to be fair, is not the worst I've heard, but not interested, mate. That's a lot of money and he doesn't really improve the squad that much. Like he's okay. 30 K for this. Why? Or here, for example, look, okay. We have a guy from Michelin. Yeah. A decent player. looks very, very good. Good center defensive midfielder. Mr. Agent, how much do you want? 26 to 33. Again, same stuff. I don't want to pay this. I really don't. Because if we start breaking the wage budget, which we already have, right? Milinkovic is on a lot. Barco's on a lot. Sanjus is on a lot. Like, there's so many... The, the better players in our squad... Look at that. 5k per week. 7k per week. 11k per week. You know, I mean, Saldana is just being severely underpaid. But 
It's things like this that I don't want to break the wage budget already. It's already broken. Like, obviously, like I said, there's a lot of young players here that shouldn't be, like, for example, Villagra, that shouldn't be paid this. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe for next episode, I will bring you one or two more players, which would be kind of an interesting thing. Maybe I won't. We'll see how that goes. But I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you guys for the game against Porto and Valencia. Bye, guys. Bye.